think I think all of us feel the same way, but yeah. I'm sure there are a few people that have complained about it will be actually using it to get their brewery clean or whatever. Um, I just thought I'd pay my appreciation. Of Thank you, Chair. Um, Chair, it is a very disappointing outcome. Uh, as you know, you were there, I was there. Yeah. And, you know, we all feel the same way. What I would say is that um, don't give up. There is still, you know, a license application which will have to come in from some mm -hmm. reasons. I would suggest that if you feel that strongly, lobby the chair of the regulatory and licensing committee and all the members because this will at some stage have to perhaps come back before South Gloss for a license application. Um, also, I, I found it quite amazing that one of the members who was at that planning meeting, when I read out the missive that had come out in the press that day, which had been written by the Shadow Culture Minister, urging that uh, people on committees did not give the go-ahead to what would fuel the obesity crisis in this country. <laughs> and here we are now, seeing the same councillor going off on one about the takeaways that are pre predominantly wanted to be set up in Staple Hill and Downing. Is that right, Brian? I don't know. You were there. <laughs> well, I don't know about the other issue. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the members, you know, he was there and I urged him and actually said, you know, you might find this interesting. The Shorevac Shadow Culture Minister has written this today in the press. I would urge you to heed his warning at this committee. And obviously the committee turned it down, which was good, which is what the residents wanted, which was what we wanted. But it's very disheartening that the planning inspectorate have seemed, you know, to overturn it. And I just hope that... Uh, also without conditions. Sorry? No conditions. Well, whatsoever. no, I mean, I, I just find it amazing you know, it's almost as if he didn't even read the papers. Exactly. Yeah. <coughs> she. Yeah. Or she. Whoever, you know. Justina. I, I will share something with the public, um, which I don't believe Keith knows either, um, which uh, I had a discussion with Roger Evening mm -hmm. during the week. And Roger, as you may well know, um, spent a lot of time talking to officers <coughs> in the background of South Gloucestershire. Um, I mean, he impressed all of us, to be quite frank, with, with the work they actually put, put in. Mm -hmm. And um, what he said is that uh, effectively South Gloucestershire did not defend the case. Mm -hmm. um, they actually went to a third party, uh, which they employed, mm -hmm. and For £3, basically fellow themselves to tell South Gloucestershire, literally, uh, that they should not have turned it down. Mm -hmm. They didn't actually really put the case forward, all the things, all those residents that are going to have their road, which um, is behind their houses, moved right adjacent to their houses, mm. the safety factor of that road, mm. none of that was mentioned. There were so many issues in relationship to it, mm. um, it's really bad. Mm. And, uh, and I know that uh, the officers uh, spoke to, who, uh, Roger Henning spoke to Sarah, um, on this, and uh, you know, he said that um, <clears throat> it's all your fault. You ain't even got uh, mm -hmm. um, a sort of tie on the, uh, on the on the timings uh, yeah. on it. And, and I thought, well, this is unbelievable. Because mm -hmm. Roger um, wanted the application to go ahead. He put nothing mm -hmm. on there, condition-wise, and um, everything was argued. Mm -hmm. And you know, and this is actually crazy. So you're right, Keith. It's got to go through. Uh, licensing, mm -hmm. food licensing, hours of opening and all that. So planning commission can be granted uh, with no um, restrictions because Tesco's actually operates on a 24 hour basis anyway. Um, so that's why he's done that. But the reality is that the licensing is another matter. So we may see another appeal coming up. Sure. The, the other thing I was going to say was, um, you, you know, as I said at that meeting, Bradley Stoke lacked a district centre for a long, long time here, desperately needed. And yes, 28, 29 years down the line, we ended up with one. But 
It's not what was asked for by the residents. Good retail shops, not a glorified food court. And that's what you've got over there. And now they want to build on the rest of the car park and have more takeaways and food courts. You know, I mean, it's not what the public wanted. It's not what I wanted. And, you know, I mean, I'm just glad that our planning process now in South Gloss is a great thing overall, you know. So, you know, that's the next thing. Mm. South Gloss councillors are hopefully going to revisit the whole of that change that has taken place mm. on those planning, new, new planning processes. I've never been in favour of it from the start. And I certainly, you know, I'm not going to say... I shared a conversation <coughs> at the original planning application with uh, of a meeting I've had with a senior planning officer many years ago mm. um, in Brighton <laughs> when we were looking at the Willowbrook and the yeah. position things we go into now. And she had said to me, and I was told off by officers later, I should never have mentioned it, and oh. I should mention it again tonight, so <laughs> please respect. Well, uh, what are we going to basically, for? Basically, yeah. basically, the conversation went along the line planning, because I was very interested in planning when I was younger, I did a lot of town planning and different things, and I said to her, why is this being, you know, allowed in this particular way? She said, it should never have happened, mm. because what you should do with planning, you should build a town around mm. the mm. shopping centre, mm. you shouldn't actually put the shopping centre mm. right adjacent houses and things, and what you do is you build up that property, so you have tall rise, you know, high rise of properties mm. coming in, flats, apartments, and things. They can look down on things fine. Mm. Um, we've got good barrier walls to the ground floors that you know are then sort of well uh, protected. Here, we've got a row of houses mm. which are flash illuminated by blue mm. neon signs and the like, etc. Mm -hmm. And it's disgusting, it really is. Mm. So, I mentioned that, and I shouldn't have done it because. She's now a planning inspector. It's a shame she mm. wasn't called in on this one because I know if she had been, mm. um, perhaps she would have been because there was a, a closeness there. Mm. But uh, she's now a planning inspector. And she's moved off. Well, I think the other interesting thing, Chair, is that this committee, when they came back, even though it was in for appeal, they applied to have their signage, mm -hmm. illuminated signs. How could they ask for that mm. signage on well, something they need not planning for? You know, I think we all question we that. Yeah, well, and we turned do it down that? here. So, I mean, this town council is stuck up for its yeah. residents. Mm -hmm. And we intend yeah, to yeah, carry yeah. on doing yeah. that. I certainly do, anyway. It should, should have been, also, it should have been um, a meeting originally where, effectively, Kent, the people would have been able to sort of have this mm. say, but they did it in written one. Yeah. Mm. And normally that would have been finished by something like October. <laughs> and Sharon here has been writing and writing and writing to try and actually mm. find out what's happened. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, we're all very saddened by this, it's not good. Um, as I said, there's a lot of people probably, you know, would have supported not having it, but I think we'll probably use it. I shouldn't really laugh, but I think they'll probably do, do mm -hmm. that. Um, and, um, you know, this is there. Well, I hope it's not but an end of the way during the daytime. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are unaware as well, and especially from press reports, mm -hmm. that as residents, mm -hmm. okay, we may or may not want it, but actually our main point was that we didn't want it near our houses mm. and I don't think that comes across in press reports no, mm. at right. all. There's a bristle evening post report. That was report. never our issue about what um, type of units. And it, it seems that every houses. time a report comes out, whether it's Bradley Journal, you know, we mm. we feel antagonised because then mm. we get the boy racers in the car We've been antagonised night, since Revving their engines, beeping their horns late at night. Um, yeah. Oh, and I, and, and I think the press reports don't it actually reflect it. correctly. It wasn't okay. It may or may not be about mm. McDonald's. I don't want to see McDonald's in Bradley State personally, but it was up. Like, the whole point was, you know, we don't want it near our houses. And you can call us snowflakes or yeah. nimbies, but we've already got a big I bet you anybody loose. saying that also wouldn't want to live right yeah. by it. So mm -hmm. yeah, and we know the problems that comes with the yeah. area. Mm. There's a quiet end of the car park, that yeah. would be a lively part of yeah. the entire site 24-7, all night long. Mm. Well, well, I wrote to the committee and said, you know, consider if it was your family, mm -hmm. you know, these people bought these houses in good faith, yeah. thinking that they'd be able to bring their children up with mm. a healthy 
healthy lifestyle and yeah. everything else. It's not going to be like that. <clears throat> yeah. And you know, so think of it like that. That you, you know, you've got to make that decision. Just think of it if it was your family. Mm. Yeah. Well, health well, yeah, is not just on the food. No, no it's all not about the CO two emissions. Yeah. Right in our back gardens mm -hmm. where yeah. our children play. Well, mm. I rang the Green it's Deal. It's all about the food. I rang the Green Deal. Yeah. Um, and they didn't do a thing. Nothing. Mm. Well, like I said, it's in the name, drive through, that yeah, means exactly. cars. Exactly. Means exactly. Cars. And the fact you can't get served, yeah. if you walk up, you can't get no, served. Can't, so yeah. how is that, you know, trying to... How is that to bringing footfall reduce? to the centre? Mm. Yeah. Let's hope it's not, not diesel lorries delivering McDonald's uh, mm. all materials, eh? So, so it's, all, it's all about it's money. Case money. Where she actually intended all those money yeah. Talking about the lights, <coughs> that is currently still waiting for approval, which obviously be rubber stamped. Um, I, we have a lot of issues with the lighting. We've got the signs are pointing towards the housing. I don't know whether you guys have got an opportunity to again object, but for us, it seems like it's... Um, we don't need to know McDonald's is there. We don't need to know. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need to advertise to us. So what's the purpose mm. of the direction of the signage towards the housing? I don't get that. So I don't, I don't know whether you guys... Makes, to be honest, I don't think the powers that be... I don't think it makes the slightest bit of no, difference. No, I don't think they care. It's all about money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've been to the MP, opinion. we've been to Jack Presty, we've been to the um, the Labour candidate as well. She spoke to us. They did all they could. And um, mm. obviously, individuals behind closed doors did deals, and we know it. Mm. Yeah. We even got support. I can show you. Yeah. 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 To get the chair, I think it should be noted though. This this council here, no politics. Everybody here was against it. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had people from Fact and Profit at the Liberal. Yeah, we did. Okay, they they did try and get in, saying what we we objected to it. But the reality was, we actually had them down here. Bless bless. The whole case, they actually came down. They do. Yeah. They well, that's why they changed it, didn't they? That's a very good reason why well, it shouldn't happen. Yeah. I did remind good. Pat that she was in power mm. for all those years, the Liberals, here in Bradley Stone, mm. and they campaigned for good quality mm. retail mm. district centre. Mm. This is not a good quality no, shop. I, no, no. I don't know what the future looks like. No, I mean, sure. Sure. Yeah. to be honest yeah, with you, I've already taken my yeah, yeah, away from the centre. So. Yeah, Chair, uh, uh, right now, as this decision has been made. I just want to actually uh, also thank all the councillors who put their own thoughts, especially Councillor Roger mm -hmm. Evelyn and all the other councillors, as well as our clerk for putting a huge report, putting our objection, mm -hmm. resonating what mm -hmm. the residents said. Mm -hmm. And we will continue our support to the residents as we go along, mm -hmm. because all in our paths, either licensing, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. uh, we will be offering our support and we'll continue to do that. And which councillor has uh, vac vacancy? What's that for currently? It's not. Uh, that is that is actually one of our councillors. Oh, okay. Because it's not the, Roger, is it? Not <laughs> Roger. Roger. No, Roger is still here. Is okay. Are you putting your name forward? Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I know if, somebody if, might. <laughs> but if there is no election, we will call from people yeah. that we already mentioned. Yeah. We would like to actually see people who are community oriented so that we can actually call, mm -hmm. respective of politics, because that's actually mm -hmm. how we like. If, I think if, all if you don't know anything about it, yeah. you speak to Sharon. Okay. Sharon will actually help okay. you. Well, look, we're all okay with planning rules and laws now. So. <laughs> <laughs> we're all experts in that. <laughs> Two years of this. You don't get paid as a councillor, No, no, no. Well, nor did we. For the last two years, we have been paid. We've spent a lot of time on it. Thanks for your foot. Thanks for your foot. And then you get scrutinised by Stephen Horton. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Be in the media tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to finish off. You've been quick to get out there. We've got to find a name first. We have got Wayne here tonight. And they're obviously listening to this, and they've yeah. really looked at. Um, and, and at the moment, they've been held in very high esteem in uh, in planning circles yeah. um, for designing the new tank, which is going in. Uh, mm -hmm. We understand infrastructure happening before uh, development, and looking to develop something which is really good. So I think mm -hmm. a lot of people are going to be yeah. quite jealous. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and probably going to be <laughs> signing up to buy a new house over there. <laughs> so let's we'll move on to that in a minute. What's the process? Um, I'm going to move them up on the schedule, in fact. Where's yeah. Sarah? Yeah. Work down yeah. there. So I'm going to move them up and maybe we'll have a few minutes. After the minute. After so, the minute. Second. Do I vote on that piece? 
that has moved. Um, right. <coughs> I mean, we could be here all night actually talking about um, coolers, but no. Uh, no. Right. Uh, to receive any uh, apologies for absence, there, yeah. No, hardly No? No. Okay. Announcements by the chair. Uh, happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> 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 mm. Oh, decor that's that's always forget that one. Decoration point members, yeah. Decoration point members. Any members got any decoration under the local government act they wish to uh, advise us of now? Yeah, What they all on? Licensing. Licensing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've never admitted it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Nothing to hide. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we'll minor in there anyway, from the planning committee and so forth. Anybody else? I've got an announcement for the decorations I've got. Okay, yeah. Um, it came in today and it's um, Holy South Cross Online Consultation at Holy Trinity School. The school keep it clear to the view, Bradley Stoke. Um, so it is proposed to install some new signs on the single post back to back and promote the traffic regulation order to make the lining enforceable. Because at the moment the um, yellow zigzag lines at Holy Trinity Primary School <coughs> aren't enforceable because there is no traffic regulation order linked to them. Mm -hmm. so they're reviewing quite a few zigzag lines, I think, across the whole of South Ross. That's good. So, yeah, so the RRC comment, but it's just the fact it came in today. And the consultation opens on the 28th of January, so it closes on the 18th of February. So when it comes, when the staff's available, the staff can comment as individuals. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I will, I will announce one thing. Uh, Bradley Stoke has actually put their precept, precept up, which is the tax which um, we take from people locally in our, as our residents. We always try and keep that as low as possible and do better things and manage manage, manage our assets in, in the right manner so people can enjoy them and they're kept in good condition, etc. And we've actually put it up by 1%. Um, and that's a way of actually showing you what's actually happening locally. Filton has just announced, and they are the, literally the highest, well, they were the highest precept in South Gloucestershire anyway, and it appears they are now the highest precept of any um, small town or um, parish council in the country. They put it up by 35%, which is not inconsiderable, considering that a D rated house is now actually 300, I think it's in 15 pounds. Per year, and that's against Bradley Stoke, which is currently 100 out of team. So. 1538. Yeah. yeah. So I was 100 out of team. That's three entries. So any chance of actually arguing? <laughs> um, and, and Patchway, unfortunately, <coughs> although they've got Charlton Hayes, which is pumping huge amounts of money yeah. into it, and they can't Patchway can't spend any money there until ten years after the last case, <coughs> something like a quarter million pounds a year from. Um, Sean Hayes, which equates maybe to fifty percent of their budget, we just put it up by seventeen percent. That's true. Sir, seventeen percent. The numbers have got the leaflet from the conservatives. Yeah, with all the numbers. That's years ago. Yeah. Um, no, we just, we just put it up by seventeen. I think it's seventeen point one percent. I was there last night. You were there. I argued against it uh, and gave a good reason for not doing it and an alternative budget which would have balanced. Um, but unfortunately, we were drained out and uh, it's now gone up by 17.1 percent i know it's the poor attendance of councillors as well mm. not very good is it it's interesting because the thing is patchway's got something like five committees and quite a few of the councillors are actually on all the committees however that was not actually shown in the um the the, the actual thing but i've actually we've got <coughs> committees and we've got subcommittees Mm. We've got personnel, I've got the chair of personnel. I've been running around in circles and had emergency meetings literally twice a week since I started. And the last emergency meeting which we had, which was for full council, remembering that effectively you don't need to go into all full council meetings. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The reality, they they put it out, so mm -hmm. done. But there's a lot of meetings, a lot of meetings yeah. to be held, more than in this in this in mm -hmm. Fair. Can, can we, can we, we come go back to that? Yeah. yeah. Before we go on, I coming back on Sharon's uh, comments now. This uh, lines the consultation. I'm going to write and say it again. They're consulting on something in retrospect that the lines are already in. Yeah, but there's no traffic regulation on them. Yeah, but I mean, any other time they say with the public, you know, when they want lines down and they say, oh, I got a tin of yellow paint, I can come and do it for you if you want. You know, here they put lines down. Somebody gave them permission to do it. They didn't consult. Yeah. I find this absolutely amazing. Any other time you can't have lines down before they carry out a consultation. Mm -hmm. How did this one get through? What a waste of money. Well, who gave that one? How much money for the consultation? No idea. It's the wrong way about. You consult first, and then you put the lines down. Even if they say you don't want lines, it's still good. But in principle, we agree. We can do that with that, so that's fine. Well, I'm sure the journal will run with that one. Let's move on. Let's go. 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 Let's Okay, that's all finished. Yeah, if you weren't here, you, you can abstain. <laughs> Any abstentions? Any against? Okay. Okay. Uh, they're a multi-national uh, company with multi-skills, cement, 
engineering, construction, property development, education, telecommunications, transport. In, they've done a super um, fast speed railway line in, in Malaysia linking Kuala Lumpur to the airport. Um, and they own in Britain Wessex Water, which in this area you probably get your water from Bristol Water. No, when you flush your loo or take the rubbish down the drain, that's Wessex Water clearing all the rubbish. Um, and that goes to Avonmouth, but the, the water you drink is probably Bristol water if you live in this area. Yeah. But Wessex water covers the whole of the southwest apart mm. from Bristol itself and, and the surrounding area. It goes right down to the south coast to Dorset, to Bournemouth, across to Salisbury, back round up to this part of the world, down to Avonmouth, Western Supermare, and it just about hits the Devon, the Somerset Devon border, so it's a huge area that it covers in and serves more than two and a half million customers. They also own the Gainsborough Bath Spa, which is a hotel in Bath, which is a five-star hotel, and Thermae Bath Spa, which is the hot waters in Bath, if anyone's aware of them. Yeah. Uh, that's why Bath is called Bath, and it has hot water, and they, they operate Thermae Bath Spa as well. They also have hotels in London and Edinburgh. They're long-term investors, they're entrepreneurs, they see an opportunity, they grab it, they run with it, they continue investing in whatever they've seen and built, and they have never sold a business. They absolutely are dedicated to seeing things through and, and delivering, and, uh, and they consider themselves community builders. They're, they're really keen on that. Um, I've worked with them. I worked when Thermé Bar hadn't even opened and it was hugely controversial, and I've worked with them through, and I've seen um, how they very much try and uh, buy into whatever is the local story or the local community, and they're really, they're really keen on doing that. So they're long-term investors and, uh, and have invested in this area. So Filton Airfield, we I think probably most of you are familiar living in this part of the world about Filton Airfield. It closed in 2012. They bought it, they were looking for a hotel uh, to develop in Bristol and um, driving around couldn't find anything and, and the person who was showing them what they had on offer in Bristol just mentioned the airport and they drove down the runway and said let's buy it. So uh, they instructed the chairman of Wessex Water in, in Britain buy it, don't pay too much, so that's what he did. Uh, and he bought, so he bought the air, they bought the airfield, absolutely with a view to develop it. Um, and then about a year later, they bought the Brabazon hangars, which are these three hangars here. This is an old picture. Um, it's taken probably in about the 1950s. So, Filton is, is steeped in history. It's the original terminus for the Bristol tramway. Um, it became one of the world's largest aircraft manufacturing sites. Um, and even today, we've still got GKN, Rolls-Royce, Airbus on that site, the engineering sort of expertise on that area. Brabazon, the hangars, were named after the, the man who decided to build the Brabazon um, aircraft. It was seen after the Second World War in Britain as being a way of harnessing all that engineering, technology, expertise that should be used for warfare. And we were looking at, Britain was looking at a way of harnessing all of that and creating a domestic industry that would really employ the local people and, and give a boost to, to the southwest. So they created this, this huge aircraft, it was like a, a cruise liner in the sky, had a cocktail bar, cinema, for a hundred people, it was massive, um, and, and very luxurious, it was that early jet set type thing. They pioneered um, technologies in order to create it, but just as it was really at a stage where it was going to take off and become a commercial success, they invented the supersonic, or, or the jet engine, which then became the supersonic jet, jet engine and, uh, and Concorde. So um, it never really took off as a commercial success, but it absolutely led the way to what happened next. This is a picture of the Brabazon inside the Brabazon hangars. You can see all this amazing steel structure. It was, it was designed by an, uh, an aviation engineer, not an architect. Um, and in fact, we've met his children. He's no longer alive, but we've met his children. Um, and they said that their dad described it as the shed. So he used to go to work in the shed, and, and this is the shed he used to go and work in. But they are huge, and that's what we're proposing to develop. Actually on the airfield, this is the bit I can't tell you much about, but actually on the airfield, uh, they're creating a new neighbourhood. Uh, they're going to call it Brabazon after the aircraft. There will be a new transport hub in that there will be a metro bus route coming straight through, and then cutting up towards Prince Causeway, linking to Bristol City Centre. Three new schools, a senior school, a secondary school, and, and two primary schools. Um, a 10-acre park, a new workspace, and 2,765 homes. Uh, they recently had a, a little ceremony, you can see um, Councillor Savage here. Um, they, used, they recently, last week, week four, had a, 
a breaking ground ceremony, and that's where they've just started working on the very first phase of houses, which they've got planning permission for, and that will be the first phase is 270 houses. There is, I know you were all talking about creating communities and infrastructure, um, there is uh, an agreement called the CPNN, which is the Cribs Patchway New Neighbourhood, and it's a, an agreement between all the developers in the area, um, one of which is, is YTL, and they have between them committed these funds that's um, uh, a total of a, a fairly large amount of money, um, and that's also being um, matched, not quite matched with uh, South Northshire money, um, to make sure that all the infrastructure is in place before any of these big projects go ahead. So obviously there's the Metrobus extension, there's a whole domain 38 corridor improvements. Um, you'll be aware, I'm sure, of the Gypsy Patch Lane work that has it started or is oh, it? Yeah. Oh, oh, it's not our fault, but it's not our fault. And it's the Gypsy Centre, all sorts of different um, cycling and walking routes, so there's a whole load of infrastructure. What is that? Stick West, Bramley Strip Wing? What is the way for that? 2.3, what other things have you agreed? As I said, I'm not, I don't know about this, I just know what, what I've been more getting inside. Lane over there, lane I don't know, I, I imagine it's something yeah. enhancing to, to make sure things flow, but I'm afraid I don't know. I, don't know. I can find out if you'd like me to, if I, I don't know. Yeah, we could like to know if it's okay. going to affect this end, yes, this end. Of, course, of course. Is this stuff that's already been done as well? This has been allocated, so it will be done, I think, is that right, do you know? Yeah, it's all the books have all been agreed and the whole message has been going on for the No, I thought some of it has already been done because it's not going to be clear. Yes, it might well be. We can get a breakdown of that. Yes. When YTL started this scheme, when YTL first came on the scene, they came to Stoke Gifford and I asked a guy there a question. In Malaysia, YTL are very big in transport. Yes. And wouldn't it be a good idea? If you were to get in quick and take on the Metro bus, I'll repeat that, Metro bus, it would be good if YTL was to take it over. Perhaps we might have a good bus service. Yeah. I'll leave it like that. I'll, I'll pass it back. <laughs> um, I will just say that there's a huge amount they're already committed to. Yeah, I know that. Something yeah. else on top would be a, a big demand. But do you know, I, I wouldn't put it past them doing anything. You know, no. they, they're absolutely, they see opportunities and they, if it's going to improve what they're doing, they, yeah. I'm sure they'll, they'll want to be involved in some way, but I'm, the metro no, is sort of out of our reach at the moment. I mean, we're all it's grateful good. for what you're doing there. I mean, you know, mm. the money wouldn't be there any other way. No. But, oh, you know, yes. the fact is you are big in uh, transport and my immediate thoughts were, if we're ever going to get a decent bus service or a tram service in this area, YTL should make their mark. Well, as, there I, as I said, I'm very happy to pass that back up. Um, I don't have the ear of, uh, no. <laughs> of the man who owns the company. Say so he's called Hong, he's the son of, of Yo Chong Lei. But um, I will very happily pass it up through the channel and, and suggest it, who <laughs> knows. Mm -hmm. uh, as I say, I, we don't have any control over that. And they have already you know, got quite a lot of work yeah. to do on the airfield. Uh, and the hangers. So I'm sure we're very grateful for what first bus, uh, first bus does, but yeah, you know, I would like to see YTL. It's always good to Can see I just ask about the businesses that are going to be on there? On the airfield. Mm -hmm. At yeah. the moment, um, they've got 62 acres of mm -hmm. land at the A38 end, but I, I don't think they've got anyone brought in at the moment. I don't think they're at that stage yet. Really they've literally got planning permission for 270. Mm. They've got outline planning permission for the entire mm. runway. It's 380 acres. But they've got um, detailed planning permission just for the 270 houses which they're building. And they will mm. gradually let that evolve and grow as a community. So when those new, that 62 acres actually comes online and, and becomes businesses, I don't know. But I know that they're very keen on having quality you know, hopefully enhancing whatever you know, Airbus and, and GKN are doing, that sort of you know, tech and mm. um, uh, engineering and, and that sort of type of work. But uh, at this stage, they haven't got well, any tenants. So I read it's, it's going to be a self contained um, environment, i.e., that the people live there, socialise there, work okay. there. Well, I think some will. I don't think they can dictate who does what where. No, 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 they no, like it. No, 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 like no, 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 yes, yeah, they could get you in one place and cycle up to go. I think yeah. that's what they aspire to doing, uh, mm -hmm. to very much encourage people to live that live work quality of life. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, but, um, at the moment we don't you know, we no, don't know what, what the businesses are. I was just thinking about the plans ahead. Yes, but there will be businesses. 
Jeez, there will be people that, that could, they could work, the people who've got the houses now could work for them. Yeah, they do. Then we'll be able to yeah. work in businesses. Yeah. 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 Yes, 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 absolutely. Yes, absolutely. They want to minimalise. All I know is that it's a good thing, but how, what that would be like at this stage, I, I don't think they know. Mm. You know they're very much in early stages of discussing, having conversations with, with some people I'd like to attract and just get. Mm. Okay. Mm. So um, we all know about transport, it's really, connectivity is really important. So this is the new runway neighbourhood called Brabazon, connected by the M4, the M5, the M32, north, south, east, west. We've got obviously going over into Wales and the Seven Bridge. You've got the A38 and the A4018, two train stations at Temple Meads and Parkway, which are already in existence. Uh, the port, the airport, the universities, and there's already this sort of cluster of engineering um, type businesses on the east side of the, of the runway. And to the west, there's this leisure destination which is beginning to come up, things like the Wave at East Compton, um, you know, the, the Mall, uh, Wild Place. There's quite a lot of things already happening around this area. Um, so it's really important that we, we manage, manage the traffic. Um, and it's something that we've been working really hard on, and when we've been talking to Bristol City Council and South Gloucestershire Council, we're really you know, trying to make sure that everything that we do reduces car dependency. One of the one of the great things about the fact that YTL owns the hangars is going to do the work on transforming them, and then has employed us to run it. So we work for YTL. It's not some big American conglomerate coming in and, and operating it. We'll be embedded in the local community, and it matters to us on our reputation. We want to be good neighbours. Um, but we will also be able to therefore communicate yeah. with visitors and tell them about transport. And everything that we do, our transport strategy and communication will be encouraging people to get off your car or out of your car, get onto public transport, here's the train, here's the bus, this is the cycle route, and really encourage people to, to not use cars as, well, as much as possible. Of course we know some people will, we'll never be able to stop everyone from doing that. People with access and mobility issues, people who live in the middle of nowhere and there's no public transport, we know people will want to use their cars. Uh, but we will do everything we can to make it as easy as possible for people to use public transport. You wanted to say Yeah, you highlighted the two stations just now, Parkway and Temple yes. Meads. But, you know, in this area, we've got other stations, Abbey Wood, Patchway. Absolutely. And, you've also and I'm got about a new to tell one. you our new one. <laughs> yes, exactly. So um, we will have here a new train station, which will go on to Henbury, yeah, Henbury. And Henbury back down into Temple Meads. Um, I don't think I've got a map of it, but there is obviously here you've got Parkway. Mm. But the park, there's, there's a route, there's a railway mm. track which runs from Parkway, obviously from the east of England, from Parkway mm. into here mm. and off mm. round to Henbury. Mm. At the moment, there's a single line of about mm. two miles, and uh, Network Rail does not plan to make that for public use. Mm. We've got conversations going on to encourage mm. them to do that. It would be a commitment of between five and ten million pounds to do mm. signalling work to encourage that. And of course that then links mm. right way out and in and it, it makes for much better service. And the service will have from Temple Meads up to um, the arena and up to obviously the, the whole development here and then back down into the city centre. And then obviously it can come up round and, and come north as well. But uh, it's something that, that we're, we're having those conversations already. So the network rail is committed to opening that train station in 2021, and also the metro bus route is committed to be open at the end of 2021. So well before the arena is even built, that will be up and running and functioning, and hopefully people from the surrounding area will start to, you know, to be able to use it. Um, there's going to be a sort of a, what, what our, our developers describe as a super highway of cycling and walking going east to west, and then connected to Osmat so that people come in on cycle routes through the, the new neighbourhood, but also to access the arena. There will be um, blue badge parking here, so people who um, have accessibility uh, needs will be able to get into the arena from here. But everyone else will come over the railway line, over the bridge, all our customers will come through the front, front door. Um, what about the other car parking? Is car parking will be here. Um, that's for 1,700 cars. Um, which works out about 10% when we're operating at full capacity. Mm -hmm. It will also be used for other things, for you know, people who are coming to visit you know, their employment area or maybe people who, who are commuting in and out from, from the train station into town. So there'll be all sorts of other uses as well. Um, and I've got a slide in a minute which shows you that we've also 
um, had a conversation with other um, uh, landowners, I suppose, who have got already got car parks, so Yui, um, Wild Place, Parkway, the Mall, where when we have a busy, when we have a full capacity day, we would put in park and rides and shuttle buses, so that we ease. The, the need for cars coming into this area and keep them kept out in satellites around the area, so keep them very much off the local streets. Um, so that's something that we, we've already had those conversations. Obviously, we can't sign any agreements until we've got planning permission, and we're definitely going to be doing it, but those conversations are ongoing. Sure. Just a question, um, because my concern is the pollution. Yeah. With all the traffic that's going to be coming there, people live there as well. Yeah. And there's a lot of asthma that's going on with all the motorways and cars there. There's been an increase of uh, children getting asthma, and that is one of my concerns. Mm. Don't worry, we've got McDonald's so, coming 24 7. Yeah. We'll all have asthma, it's so, okay. <laughs> my granddaughter's got it, she's yeah. very seriously ill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my son is, but you know, we're going to have McDonald's behind yeah, us. The they the didn't take any protection. Oh, oh, but that's that. that. <laughs> 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 And trying to make sure that the, the traffic remains just off the M5 and the M4 mm -hmm. means that the whole of this area should see. But we should be able to reduce it by quite a large amount. Obviously, there will be more people, but um, it won't make much more difference than saying people can come down the A38 to get to the city centre one. They'll just be, we'll be keeping them parking rides up here, keeping them off the streets, and then shipping them in. We're already also having conversations about those shuttle buses not being diesel, you know, biogas or, or clean clean energy. So okay. those conversations are already also being happening. And we'll, we're being required, I mean, all businesses expected to, mm. you know, to try and be carbon neutral yeah, and we're absolutely mm. driving down mm. everything that we do to be mm. as sustainable mm. as, as um, car, we won't be carbonless because it's not going to be mitigated. The, the, the mm. transport mm. business choice, what we can't do, we can't control that, except within our own demise and our methodology about how we drive ticketing you know, towards mm. more sustainable methods. What we can do is try and influence that through our pricing policy, say look, when you buy your ticket, mm. how are you going to get here? This is the best route we mm. have. You know, our pricing policy for on-site parking will be Mm -hmm. Substantial. Mm -hmm. Our pricing policy for a shuttle bus or for parking mm -hmm. ride will be much more attractive. And that's the only way we can influence that behaviour yeah. yeah. until sustainable, more sustainable trans forms of transport, which are not within our control, come on. Mm -hmm. on. Okay. 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 One of the things, as you own that land, mm -hmm. okay, like I put earlier, I already put a parking mm -hmm. drive space somewhere because it's a mm -hmm. just list mm -hmm. block. Mm -hmm. It'll be allocating a provision for that, mm -hmm. that'll be great. Well, we're sort of being told that park and ride encourages people on. So, mm -hmm. so there's a, you know, obviously we want to try and keep them away from drive. If you put a park and ride here, yeah, you're encouraging no, everyone to no, drive no, down no, here, park no, here. No, so what we want to do is say, don't drive. You know, just don't drive, you know, come some other way. Mm. There's a train station within a couple of hundred yards. Mm. There's cycle paths, there's walkways, mm. there are buses, there's, you know, metro bus. We're trying to get people to think differently about how they, we, all we can do is influence. We mm. can't demand them to do, you know, can't make mm. them do it. But as soon as you put a car park here, mm. everyone thinks, oh, I'll drive. You know, mm. we need to make it so it's the least well, attractive option, mm. not well, the best option. For the people, option. Mm. I'm talking about the, the, for the people coming outside, this is one of the corridors to get the this to. So if you can allow that, because it's right now, if you look at the year 38, it's chocolate block. Yeah. Right so that's the reason why I mentioned that. But that's, yes, that's, but that's, that's fair, before that's even the arena was built. Yeah. That was one yeah. of the yeah. I mean, I suppose there might be the opportunity where the car park goes for people who want to commute into Bristol, just get in and out to Temple Meads and things, that they would be able to park in that car park and go in and out. And I, and I imagine we'll come up with a ticketing strategy that if you're getting on the train to commute and not driving down the A38, it's a different pricing than if you're coming to the arena and you've just driven and you can easily have walked or caught the bus. So we'll, okay. we'll have to look at all those pricing strategies and, and how we manage And them. I also support your, your motion to actually put connectivity to the parkway. So that will be a good thing. So that will be connecting. Well, we, we just person. need as many people as possible to lobby network rail to mm. Mm. Yeah, mm. dig deep and mm. find mm. the money mm. into it. Absolutely. And that's something else we're having conversations with now because no point in being a train every three hours. It's useless to anyone. So absolutely, we need to make sure. And we need to make sure that. For example, if we've had a Saturday night concert that finishes at half past ten, mm -hmm. that there's a train leaving there at mm -hmm. quarter to eleven, yeah. Yeah. so that you haven't got a whole load of people then mm -hmm. ordering Ubers and driving home. Mm -hmm. so we need to make sure that that service mm -hmm. works properly. And those are all conversations mm -hmm. that we're having. Mm -hmm. One of our issues is, is 
and this sounds a bit like I'm, I'm sort of like ducking out of it, but is that until we've got planning permission, mm -hmm. we can have the conversation, but we can't sit around the table and start signing agreements because mm -hmm. you know, you know, we don't have any real sort of like proper formality about it until we've actually we're doing it. But those are conversations we're already having high level, and mm -hmm. and you know, very much we feel really strongly that it would be great to have that that train service, which is really regular. And once you've got mm -hmm. people here working. And you've got Horizon 38 on the other side of the road, and you've got 4,000 people working in Airbus every day. That train station should be, should be in tomorrow. Yes. There should be people commuting. Once they've got the train station, we ought to be able to get people out of their cars and commuting there. Will you be train. monitoring that then? When it's all built up, would you be doing an ongoing monitoring to see we'll what's happening? We'll have a happening? dynamic, yeah, we'll have a dynamic system, but we'll be talking to them before that even, because mm. that will open two years before yeah. we start. So mm. we'll. We'll be aware of what's going on there. We'll be talking to them the whole way through to try and get as much as we can. Yeah, we're not in control of network rails, but we'll absolutely, we're absolutely having those conversations. Some of the new stations that have been built with great hopes in mind, places, the upsets of Rotherham and Derby, have actually proved to be white elephants. Well, let's hope this goes. We can't do more than that. We just need to encourage people to get out of their cars. Um, but there is also a conversation going on about. This, this track then goes down to Henbury, yeah. and there's something Henbury called, loop. I'm sure you know, the Henbury Loop, mm -hmm. and we keep meeting people who are all saying, well, can't we open up the rest of it? Yeah. And my understanding from a, a councillor from um, Bristol is that a business case was done about 12, 14 years ago, and mm. it was seen that there wasn't a business case to do that. But I would argue that there's, in the next yeah. 10 years, there's a huge yeah. business case to do yeah. that. Yeah. Apart, yeah. From it, apart from whether or not we build a single house, there's mm. an environment you know, that needs to be protected, yeah. and so there's a huge yeah. business case to not get people in their cars. I think the mm -hmm. other big issue you've got is the port. Yes, I think there is a blockage further that part down. Of the railway, yeah. and Bristol Port has the capacity to have a deep port to put yeah. in, but they won't allow that part of the rail to be taken over. Yeah, well, so I, I, I really we just all need think to start making a lot of noise. Though, it's yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, to save them. At the it's end of the day, I mean, the only way you're ever going to get people out of cars is to have cheap, sustainable transport. Yeah. Easy and options. This Easy site options. here, Absolutely. this site here is owned by you, mm -hmm. YTL, not me personally. Um, <laughs> and, you know, YTL, I think, as I said earlier, if they were to take over the franchises of rail going in there and the transport and provide cheap, sustainable transport, people won't go there by car. They'll have no necessity to. We, you can yeah. come there to a concert by train, yeah. go home by train, yeah. or coach, you know, whatever. But it has to be sustainable yeah. and cheap. Yeah. If you're well, that's, that's be, what we, you know, affordable and sustainable. And, and, and that also integration is always key. Because you, integration is yes. key, like you mentioned. Yeah. If you're a concert at 10 30 or 11 o'clock finish, you need to have integration Absolutely. with that. So that mm. Well, that's the other reason why it would be good to have parkway. Mm. Right? The other option is from here, you go into Temple Mills and they get to the Bennington train out. Because if you just go straight through to Parkway and on, you don't need to go into Temple Mills and that then allows that, you know, the people to come from the east. So it, it enables us to. As I say again, I'm sorry to keep saying, but we are having all these conversations and at this point we can't, you know, we can't promise you anything. What we can promise you is that we'll continue trying and we will be really, you know, sort of like pushing to get the best solutions that we can. Okay. In terms of how it works, though, because I mean, like, Alfred Causeway is free parking, there's lots of residential roads all around it, so that if you don't manage that properly, it's just going to have a huge knock on effect to yeah. residents living outside of the room. So the MAL um, already does shuttle buses for events at Ashton Gate, and it's worked yeah. really well for them. Um, I'm thinking also, I know it's not open, but it's a huge, it's a large site, but once you started opening up the room, people can walk across, etc., it's whether people need to be Pricing for shuttle bus seems prohibitively expensive when people just didn't want to do it. It'd be interesting to see how people use cars to go and park elsewhere. Well, like we have the whole across. parking strategy where we will be in consultation with the whole area and we've sort of worked out is it 20 minute walk, half an hour walk? Yeah, so typically when we will you set you parking know. restrictions. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. So it's, it's not just here that we'll be protected, but it's these residents here, it's Cholton Hayes as well. Mm. We, we've got a whole area that we've sort of worked out that, that that's a 20 minutes of an hour walk. And beyond that, people probably will not park because it's too far and they'll get the bus in. So we have a strategy to deal with that as well. And there'll be consultation on that. Did you ask you to tell people how successful um, concert person had? 
That's in my sight. Can I get to it when I get to it? This is right. I think that particular question is a very valid one. It was interesting to see, Brian, when they had the massive attack concert, that was very well done. You had plenty of uh, shuttle buses. There was no parking in the outside of the streets, in the areas around our area, for instance, where people were seen to dump their car and then walk to the site. There was none of that. And I have to give you credit for what you did there. Show a precursor to how that is It was a good trial. Well, the reality is, if we have 17,000 capacity, there are going to be 17,000 cars. I mean, if we've got a 17,000 capacity, that's going to be a big band on the stage. The likelihood is the majority of those customers are going to be over the age of 18 and probably wanting a drink. So very few will come over. Yeah. If you've got something like Disney on ice on Saturday afternoon and it's grandparents and children, they will all want to come by car. Well, the capacity will probably be 4,000. And if you've got grandparents and children, it's probably four people per car. So that's only a thousand cars. So, and obviously there are all sorts of different connotations between, yeah, between that. But the reality is that actually that's when we can really start working with people and talking to them about how the easiest way to come is. So 17,000 capacity is most likely to affect, you know, or to, to attract people who won't be people. And there will be people driving, but not yeah. that many. They're probably more likely to get an Uber home. Yes. And then the food industry is going to be quite so busy then. But we'll, again, we'll try and make sure they don't. It was very well planned. Thank you very much. And it was in the open. Yes, what it worked. Like no, it wasn't. It was completely temporary with no one knowing where they were coming. So this just shows you some examples of where we might have park and rides. You can have one right down by Shirehampton um, and bringing people up on the M5 up. We've got the Mallet Chris Causeway, we've got Parkway, um, University of West England, and right through. So there's a whole different range of those. These are ideas about where we could where we could put this. You're taking you from West Green, is it? Saying that. Pardon? You're taking people from West Green. Which we could do. These, these are all things that we've had conversations with and, and so, yeah. high level yeah. agreements. Our transport strategy identifies those locations as strategic. Yeah. Yeah. I think the Shire Ransom one is already there, though, isn't it? Yeah, they're, 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 all they're all existing cities. They all exist, which is another thing. We yeah. both have to you know, put more concrete in the ground. We're not planning to build anything. It makes it even that makes it more sustainable. So, massive tax, as, uh, as we, we've already mentioned, 14,000 people a night over two nights in March last year. Um, last fri the Friday, they had a local rugby derby, so there were lots of other people and lots of other traffic. And on the Saturday night, there was, it was foul weather and there was a, an accident. Um, we had 2,500 cars parked each night. Obviously, we would aim to be much less than that, uh, but that's because there was no public transport mm -hmm. and, and lots of people didn't know where they were coming. Uh, 4,000 people used shuttle buses from, from the city centre, Bristol city centre. Yeah. Uh, it took them 22 minutes on average to get from the city centre. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Hangers on a Friday night yeah. in rush hour. Yeah. And no unhealthy food. It was no, all that's, yeah. that's yeah. vegetarian. And only 18 minutes home. No, no McDonald's. No McDonald's. No McDonald's. No McDonald's. Yeah. Shows how it can be done. And and it's quite yeah. a high risk thing for us to try and do it. Yeah. You know, obviously we had to put this, build this arena on the... On the um, Airfield, yeah. uh, as you can see there, it's pouring to rain one night, and also the wind was coming straight oh, through up, up the channel, yeah. so yeah. there was that risk of, of noise pollution as well. Um, but the yeah. arena is worth supposing it will be tucked in and, and the wind's coming in different directions, and it'll be acoustically loud, so those issues obviously won't be so. Yeah. And we were really pleased because yeah. beforehand the media was talking about you know, apocalypse and traffic on again, and, and that was the Bristol Post on the Monday morning. So that was for us, it really yeah. gave us. Yeah confidence that what mm. we've been talking about and what we're planning and proposing actually works which mm. for us was great mm. um and, and hopefully for you yeah, know there will there will always be complaints but hopefully most of the surrounding residents were relatively happy i know that um i think it was darren jones the mp put out a sort of social media question just saying how did it go and he said he didn't get a single complaint which is amazing and we know that some people did complain but that there were relatively few and it was it was more about um some, of, some people could hear the noise one night when the wind was blowing in a certain direction. And we get that. But uh, as a one-off sort of practice run, it was, it was um, sort of validated what, what we were aiming to do. Being, being a district councillor for that particular area, I've got the privilege of, of, of that. So all the YTL development is my, my ward. Right. Um, yeah, it's, it's amazing. 
Um, I will tell you, I did actually get a few complaints from residents right. about the noise because they weren't equipment loud enough. That was us. I thought I could hear it. I could definitely hear it. Yeah. 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 Because of no bus in the town. Along the along the road there. So that's what he did. He proposed, he proposed it, and we approved it. Um, but it was limited the amount of usage they could have for supergroups. Whoever can get 
you know, a big group in there or something, but I don't think they were going to, to do that, were they? It was, uh, it was a bit strange. Well, I'll, I'll show you how we designed the arena to make sure we attract about 10% of those will be major sports facilities. I'll show you how we're going to do that. But just to sort of reinforce what we're saying, Liverpool has an arena with other things as well, which we're going to do. We're going to have an exhibition hall and a leisure hub. And since they opened in 2008, they estimate that they've generated about 1.8 billion into the local economy. And Glasgow, just last year, 457 million, the same type of model that we're proposing. So there's real potential for us to do something really exciting and for it to have a fantastic, positive local event, um, effect on the area. Um, are these as well? No, no, they're just examples of other, because a lot of arenas are just an arena, yeah. but what we're proposing is more than that. And these are the same model, and that, that's how they're, they're generating yeah. it. So lots of arenas are just an arena, but they're publicly yeah. subsidised. And in order to make it a successful business, you can't just open 140 days a year. Mm. You can't guarantee the employment. You mm. can't make enough money to keep the thing running. You need the public subsidy. So what we need mm. is to be able to run as a, as a private business and run mm. successfully. And mm. obviously, it's a huge amount of investment that Whitetail's putting mm. in, and they need to know that they're going to get their money back mm. at some stage. Mm. So we need to have that, this other, and I'll, I'll explain what we're planning to do, but mm. we need to have more than just, just an arena. It just doesn't stand up on a, on a business mm. case on its own. Um, Bristol's the only city <laughs> in the UK that doesn't have an arena. So take this little wide square out because we don't have it yet. There's all these other places. And uh, so if you imagine that the big ones are the O2 and Manchester. So if you've got a big band, for example, or a big event, and they're doing a world tour, they do London, Manchester, and possibly Glasgow. The whole of this part of the country is completely missing out. So you're either here locally, you're either paying to go to London, yeah. paying to go to Manchester, you've got a train or a car, or a coach or a bus, you've got a journey, you're probably staying overnight. All that money is leaking out to the southwest, and we need to bring it back in and make sure that we benefit from it. But also that us locals don't have far to travel, it's ridiculous. So it's really important that Bristol, if it wants to compete on that level with Liverpool, mm. Manchester, Leeds, Birmingham, we need, we need something here, and it's really missing out at the moment. So that, that's, and, and the, the sort of live event entertainment uh, market mm. is growing massively. And in fact, millennials, apparently, they like to spend money on experiences, not on yeah, consumer, yeah. consumer yeah. goods. So that's a really big mm. business that, that's growing. And you know, we really need to make, make sure that we harness some of that mm. and that you know, we locally benefit from it. And just to reiterate, 100% private investment. YTL is paying for this. It's not mm. publicly funded in any way. They'll, they'll spend the entire amount, and everyone keeps asking how much. All I can say is more than 100 million. Uh, but we haven't, until we get planning, and we know exactly what we can do, we haven't tightened it down beyond that. Do you think the arena with Bristol Cave is better about 100 million, or do we plan for the arena which is that? Well, we've been told that if, if they built it in the city centre, it would cost about 180 million. Well, I think one of the consultations already, oh, I think we've spent a huge amount of money already. We've spent about 10 million on the bridge, haven't we? I don't know that one. 90 million. 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 
Liverpool hosted the World Cup netball this last summer. Um, we've spoken to them. If they knew that this was here and they could come, they would come here. They've already said so. BBC Sports Personality of the Year, they'd come here. And the reason they'd come is we're not just proposing a 70,000 arena, we're also proposing a festival hall, huge flat space area, which means you've got main event in here, if it was netball, you'd have shows in here, you'd have warm ups in here, training in here. This BBC Sports Personality of the Year, that was in Aberdeen. Uh, they had the bit that we all watch on the telly in the arena, but they had a whole load of community sporting events for about a week or two in the run up to it in here. And that's what we're talking about. We're not just talking about music on a stage, we're talking about bringing in a whole host of other events as well. Alternatively, you could have Stormzy on the main stage, wedding fair, or boat show, or ideal home exhibition, or crystal fashion show, whatever it is, we could do anything in there at the same time as the show in here, or together they then bring in some of those things that we just aren't attracting to the West Country at all. So it really raises the game and, and gives us all sorts of other opportunities. And of course that means a show on a Saturday night, that means business delegates all week in here coming in and then everyone, so everyone who's got a boat who's showing their boats in here, the idea for the boat um, show, but all those people who are coming here rather than Olympia or other sports or wherever else they're going. So that's then really bringing in those really exciting opportunities which drives our business from the point of view of employment and encouraging those jobs but also all those people coming to stay in Bristol and South West and all those guest houses and hotels. And it really starts uh, making a big difference there. So that's really important. And then added to that, oh, God, sorry, we've got the hut, which is uh, leisure, day-to-day, -day, people coming in for food and drink in here. Um, we've been talking to some um, leisure organisations who are interested in coming in and taking up space here, which would drive business on a much more daily basis. So it would be some sort of... Uh, leisure activity or some sort of um, uh, visitor attraction. I, I, we can't, we can't tell you. <laughs> well, I'm really sorry because it's the most annoying thing in the world when people do that. But hopefully, if we get planning permission, we'll be able to announce some exciting things and people who want to come and take up that space. And that will be, you know, local community sort of things that people will be able to benefit. Not from. big franchises. No. If, it's, if it was a franchise, it would be a sort of franchise which doesn't feel like a franchise. You know, it might, they might have two or three others, but it wouldn't be a. Um, not, we're not talking McDonald's. <laughs> 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 not enough space. So far, so you get on really well. Yeah, yeah, they're great. Really good. We, we, yeah, we're, we're fine, I think. We'll wait and see. You have to the Twitter and then you've got to wait. Yeah, well, we, we, we had the rumours ground, but then that didn't happen because you weren't giving permission on what we wanted. Well, we just keep pushing. And, you know, we're still safe there. Yeah. Well, I'll show you later how we're working with both. Uh, we've done a lot of consultations this year. Yeah. 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 So this is what it will look like. Part of the celebrating the heritage is glazing the roof, so you can see in and see all that brilliant steel structure. This is what it'll look like in the day. You're crossing the bridge, you're walking into the hangars from there. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll skip these, but... So safety first, obviously security, Manchester Arena, uh, we need to make sure that people are safe in our site. So if all the customers will come through here, there'll be touch points of security to go through. Uh, all the deliveries, all the crew, the kit, the stage managers will go round the back. So those big lorries are nowhere near the people, so we can keep that security and safety. Accessible for everyone, we want it to be easy to get to, both from the transport that we've touched on, but also for mobility, um, Issues make it is it open and accessible to everyone. I've said it'll be the third largest. It'll be flexible for all events, as I've explained, yeah. and, and carbon neutral, which we've also touched on. This just gives you an idea of an uh, evening, what it'll look like. So these are lifts taking you down if you don't want to go straight through. And you can see sort of the lighting in the evening and the dusk. And then also we've got the ability to then project on there. So whatever you're interested in, it could say netball or it could say Beyonce or whatever. So there'll be opportunities to that's a sense of anticipation of something about to happen to mm. arrive and so the excitement of your, the event you're coming to. This shows you the festival hall. So this is the big flat mm. open space for exhibitions. We put on Bristol Graduate Show, but it could be a whole mm. host of events separately or, as I said, connected to the arena. And this shows you the other, the leisure hub. So we've got, we've just put in a, a basketball court and a climbing wall and then food and drink. Um, so that would be sort of like a day-to-day -day quite street sort of environment. We're going to try as much as possible to um, make it feel quite industrial because we feel that that reflects a little bit. 
Um, one of the things to show you how it will be flexible, we have a, um, the seating goal like this, with, at the back it's more like a theatre. So if you've got your 17,000 capacity um, big show, then the stage is here and that's full and people are on the floor. And you can move the stage down until you've brought it right down to here and you've just got this end which will be here. And that creates a, more like a theatre. So here you could have 4,000 or 6,000 people and that's more like a comedy show. Or you could have a West End show or um, ballet, opera, film on the orchestra. So that makes it much more of a theatre. And that's 4,000. So locally we've got Boston Hall, obviously, in risk of 2,000, but there's nothing bigger than that. So that allows us to attract all those different things. So when we talk about 140 shows a year, 10% will be the big 17,000. The rest of the year we'll have all of these. And we could have things like here. You know, I see the, thing, the Disney on ice in the middle. So there's a whole way, way, way of different ways of doing like, uh, use space. All the red markings around are accessible. Quite often you go to an arena and you've got the choice of five seats in one place if you, if you particularly use a wheelchair. We want it to be much more inclusive so that everyone can enjoy it and have those choices that the rest of us enjoy. This shows you what it would be like in concert mode, full 17,000, big capacity. Uh, this shows you the theatre end, so it gives you that sort of feel of uh, what it might be like if you've got a stage post here. These are usually the cheap seats, the gods. We've turned that into a dino view. Which you can sit up there and have tapas and a drink while you're listening to your comedy show. I personally think that's the best seat in the house. You've got Russell Hammond or yeah. someone here. That's the best seat in the house, yes. as far as I'm concerned. But, uh, and that tickets will be priced differently depending on where you sit, obviously. So that's not necessarily cheap, but it won't be the most expensive. Would it be cheaper for the Braggy State with it? I can't Oh, good that. question. Yeah. Can, can I have some tickets now? <laughs>
diversity of staff who want to reflect the community that we're, we're sort of embedded in. Things like single-use plastic is a, is a no-brainer, obviously. And then we'll uh, do a lot of har water harvesting, so we'll capture the rainwater and that will do things like flush the loo, which will reduce the amount of water consumption. And also, the roofs are huge, and we'll have solar panels on them so that we can uh, hopefully long term we'll have battery storage and we'll be able to self generate and run, um, run really efficiently. That's a little bit more. So, for example, just by not knocking down the hangers and having to build from scratch. We're saving 18,600 um, tons of CO2 emissions. Um, in Bristol City, they have all the trees around Bristol and they're planting more, absorb about 14,000. So it's more than all the trees in Bristol absorb in carbon emissions every year. Um, and I did a little bit of Google search and it's more than 12,000 return trips on a return aeroplane full from London to New York and back. So it's a hell of a lot of carbon mm. emissions that we're saving just by using the building. Yeah. Time, times change. I was in architecture in the 60s. Mm. I was working for the park, which we actually did the Bristol United Press building, uh, down the whole market. And it's so funny, because the, the planning department wanted us to build it in brick, which actually <laughs> looked like all the other brick yeah. buildings, but we did something mm. innovational to make it different. And we actually put trees on the big model, which we would have put in around yeah. the area. And they went nuts. They said, we can't put trees down in Bristol. It won't grow, it's all the concrete. Yeah, but you need the trees to take that as well. But that's what we did. We actually got, we got it done. But the planners were objecting at the time. They said it was impossible because of roads and pavements. So how the hell do you get trees in there? Well, times have changed massively because we've done a whole big thing on landscaping and planting that. So obviously native where we can. Um, this just shows you from a size point of view, the outside area, this red square is the same size as Millennium Square in Bristol. So it just shows how much outside space we've got to, to play with and to activate. And uh, we've got a whole landscape and some plan to how we're going to do that to make it a really nice, pleasant area and make sure there are plenty of trees and, uh, absorbing all that. So just to clarify, five applications. The change of use of the hangar, as they exist today, is with Bristol City Council. We then got an application for the bridge, which spans the railway line from South Gloucestershire into Bristol. And so that's both councils. We've then got amendments to an access point, which will then create a bus gate through, um, but will also allow us to bring all our deliveries around the back, uh, and no other transport will get through there until that can be sort of secure um, and, and sort of checked as they come through. Temporary parking on the runway while, while we're working through how we, how we sort all that, and then the design codes which is part of the planning application. So there are all these five. They're in at the moment, they're under consultation. You can go and put comments on if you want to. Mm. I'm sure as a council, you'll, you'll form an opinion of your own. But from a public point of view, you can also comment, it's open to everyone. And a timeline, just to give you an idea. We did a feasibility, are, are the hangers gonna work? Could that be possible? Uh, the executive team were appointed me, Russell, our managing director, Andrew Billingham, who led the Ashton Gate development mm. uh, and we have other, other colleagues as well, there's about seven or eight of us now, quite a small team. We then went and employed a design team that included architects, mm. um, acoustics experts, transport mm. experts, engineering experts, what else, all sorts of sound and what else? Sound, lighting, lighting all sorts of, yeah, yeah, sustain, yeah. sustainability, landscape. Mm. So we brought all of them together and we produced the, the plan. Mm -hmm. uh, then in the summer we said, right, that's it, stop now because we've got to stop thinking about our planning application. We put our planning application in last year, just before the end of the year in November. Mm. We anticipate it going to Bristol City Council mm. uh, early March, what we're hoping for. But hopefully sometime there are a couple of, of committee meetings in March. So hopefully one of those they'll they'll make a decision and we just have to hope for the best mm. and that they make what we would consider the right decision. And then we go through a whole phase of detailed, technical um, design work. And that's okay, we know we've got to do acoustics, we know these are what we've got to achieve. What's the best way of doing that? What's the best to give this, uh, sort of solution to those, all those sorts of things. And that could take up to a year to do all of that work. And then we anticipate construction will be a couple of years with an opening date, we hope, of early 2023. Mm -hmm. That is obviously reliant upon us getting planning permission. But if we do in March, we hope to open early 2023. Mm -hmm. We've done quite a lot of consultation. It's great to see people here tonight, but we, you know, we hope you'll, you'll be able to tell other people about what our plans are. 
We did a survey where 96% of people were supportive of us. And of the 3.5% who weren't, it was because they were concerned about things like noise or transport. And actually, when we had conversations with them, they went, oh, oh right, as long as you do, as long as you do that, we're fine. So the, really, the other 3.5% is just as long as we deliver, yeah. which is great. And 99.9% in fact, I've only spoken to one person who doesn't want an arena in Bristol, so mm. please don't tell me you don't. <laughs> that but the people just want us to get it done. We don't live yeah. in Bristol. Oh, and South Gloucestershire. <laughs> I think we're facing South Gloucestershire. So, although the, the principal, the main planning application is Bristol, mm. it's very much mm. this area that we, we consider... What else can you call it? Yeah. 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 Well, I think it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Mm. Yeah. As long as the traffic is sorted out. Mm. Mm. Of course. Can I play my little video? Just oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, there's no sound. Oh. I can't, I'm sorry. It's just oh. telling you that we get brilliant. popcorn as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate you taking up a hell of a lot of your time, so I apologise for that. Thank you. You do, Brian. You do, Brian. At least you were talking about interesting stuff. Well, we feel quite you know, passionately about it, but you know, please, if there are any questions, do ask. Or if you haven't got time now, I can leave my cards and you can. Oh, yeah, okay, should I leave them here? Yeah. And then yeah. 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 Yes, so, so, so we do. They want to go and have a look? The third Wednesday of every month, the next one's oh, right. the 19th of February. Well worth seeing. Um, well worth seeing. They're at 10 o'clock. birthday, 19th of February. Oh. Oh. Thank you for using the browser. You just need to register so we know you're coming. So if I can do this as part, then you can have a contact. Yes, I think so. I missed the bit. I should have been missing it. No, that's right. Yeah. Accessible. Yes, yeah. all over. So it'll be all over because I'm, I'm so desperate to take my son to the oh, yeah. oh, I can never ever well, get tickets oh, yeah. to oh, Well, there will be, yeah. and we'll sort out the very place. Yes, no, we're going to talk about it. Sorry, where do we register? Just email me, and I'll send you the information. Okay. It's the as well. Thank you very much. That was really interesting. Yeah. 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 So there is a sorry, there is a public um facility. I'm doing my I'm doing my job now. I to tell you, you can log on to Bristol Planning. You can search for the arena and you can put comments in. We're trying to get people to do comments. In fact, if you email me, I'll send you the link. Well, I actually you work like to do it. Oh, do you? Well, tell your colleagues how brilliant And I work for Bristol City Council. Oh, so I can. <laughs> you may be allowed to comment then. You have to do it in your personal. No. I was going to say, yeah, I'm going to take it off. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Same, so both yeah. Yeah. There's a speaker in the yeah. projector. Okay, next one. Okay. 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 Is it a conservatory? So that's what's there at the moment. They've got sort of bits and pieces here. Oh. They're just Miss designing it up to make it all one thing rather than yeah. having to do oh, between your bits. That's, that's fine. fine. Yeah. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. fine. No that's problem. Fine. Okay, just put on that for a proposal. Mm -hmm. Proposal. Yeah. Who's second is? Healing. Or Michael. 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 All those in favour? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. You know, it's when they do planning applications, it seems to get too bigger. They never make anything bigger. Um, mm -hmm. Go big, and if you get it, fine. Okay, that's what you can always decrease. Yeah. Or not use the right. enormous space. Okay, um, that's going to be a lot. Yeah. Airbnbs. Three, P19, Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. They think yeah. that it's paid so for the hotel. Yeah. There are three comments from Nathan. There's an email of the Commonwealth Games up Charles Board. I couldn't make it. Yeah. Is it? Oh. If you they should offer low prices. The end of the day, they're offering a subscription. Predominantly trans people would go there and they can get the best deal. Yeah, it's kind of too great for them. I couldn't even have a bad idea. Yeah, you know. What is all the objections from the neighbors? Right, hang on a minute. Find us the um, email, which can't be opened on here, yeah. says in looking at this proposal. 
suppose I'm mindful that the parking provision for HMOs usually relates to 50% to the number of bedrooms, which is the same ratio as the number of four bedroom dwellings and above. In this instance, we would require no more than four off street car parking spaces, whilst the plan indicates three, which would not be acceptable. And it's noted that the frontage of the site had been block paved, and contrary to the site plan that shows three spaces, four spaces could easily be achieved. Mm. However, although the frontage has been block, block paved to provide off-street car parking for three of the four car parking spaces, are currently not accessible due to the full height curve fronting the property. In the event of approval, therefore, I would rec require the following condition. Within one month of any approval, the footway fronting the property is required to be changed to a vehicle crossover with dropped curve details uh, to be submitted for approval with the work completed. Because, because they're already in occupation, I assume. They can't have to say before in occupation, that's got to be done. <laughs> so the, um, there's three objections from members. Well, this was the license on there. For other than parking, that's right. what can you object to? It's, it's the old story. Right? Is it all the documentation? regulations are so oh strict. They wouldn't be but I think it's been done since 2017. Really? I've read that somewhere. Mm. I've read that. Oh, that's true. I might be lying on that. But you know, this one, this is a medical construction. I thought it's a conservatory or something. Some yeah. people used to come. But the PD, this was a like you're wrong, really wrong. How many accommodation is this one? Eight. 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 Yeah. Eight. 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 Stoke well, see, no, I, I'm pretty certain Bristol was limited to six. Yeah, well, you look up Stoke Park, most of the houses up there have been turned into the In fact, there's a whole estate which was you designed designed complaint. I mean, as, read through it. you know, expensive housing, and, most and of already it out of 30 houses, you're saying 20 have turned into the Yeah, there we are. Well, the description of the proposed of the market, please state the date when the work or change of use started 20, in June 2017, so it's two and a half years. So it's been there in two and a half years. years. And what is it? You're a penalty. 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 you are a penalty 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 you
Oh, okay. Now she says erection of cycle shed as part of this. Yeah, it's on the erection cycle shed. Overdevelopment? Yeah, well, yeah. I, 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 not, I agree yeah. with Ben. Because no, it's sweet, it's like studio flats, but mm. how, can you really swing a cat at it? Oh, which, okay. isn't, no, which isn't, you need to have space. Mm. But, but that's not a plan. But that's not a plan. I know it's I not a plan. Yeah. 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 Your SPCA didn't have a Especially small rooms. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, this is, I think, I'll, I'll say not the objection, we I would like to actually penalize because of actually doing that thing there to really without the permission, you know? Okay. It's not a small yeah, thing we stay about. So what happens if it's rejected? What happens? You'd be in duty, you'd be in the quiet, 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 you'd be yeah. He's got so then proposed objection and you name yeah, but you must, yeah. the, the, the council tax must be commensurate with the number of people that are occupying no, it. No, it's just per nope. property. Yeah. And if you, if you convert your carriage... You have an objection to the ground that's got for objection. Yeah, yeah, I support that. Over development? Yes. Yeah. All down yeah, it's not developed. Uh, not only up keep, not no, keeping not with the parking. area. Parking's an issue, isn't it? Yeah. Parking. So parking. So parking. It hasn't been developed. The prop the but somebody's proposed... A solution yeah, to the problem. It's a change of use, though. It's a plan, it's a plan development. Yeah, that is the development, is the change of use, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So over intensive use. Yes. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Need to space. Over oh, parking yeah. issues. So Not those people who live in those rooms, they don't have to pay. Yeah. No, they would. It's through the property. Well, no, it's the only. Insufficient it, parking and what property? community provision. So yes, insufficient you do, you do parking it on and the number of occupants over the age of 18. Yeah, they're saying insufficient parking. Yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure the owner of the property will make the rent bear in mind the fact of how much he's going to have to pay. Yes, the yeah. I think we can. I know, but I'm thinking about the community. The HMO, you've got, like eight okay, you've got separate people living in the house. I have a separate one in Bristol. And we pay a good expense. In a family, quite often, you can have the normal part of the house. Yeah. So we got the expenses of paying us the rent. But I'm thinking more about the house. What do you mean about the, the revenue? It's still very difficult to have individuals. You've got to have eight cars. It's not right, though, is it? Because, you know, if you've got eight people, you always have cars, haven't you? Well, the HRC, they'll chase them anyway because. No, I'm thinking more about what the council would earn from seven people living in that house. Whereas if you've got two people living down the road and it's like whatever it is for a property. You've then got seven people using all the services that council. Mm. There's no difference to that. Too. No difference. Parents have got adult children living at home. Yeah. Mm. It's not property that's charged. It's got a number of people in it. Yeah. Well, you've got to think of it. There's the students who don't pay rates. No. There is. It's, the, it's, Sorry. It's, the rules are complicated because you can have. You, it's not based purely on the, the number of occupants in the property, but there are. Exemptions to that, where you have things like single occupancy yeah. and yeah. things like that. Yeah. So that's where it's, that's where that starts to play into. It's done on banding of your property, yeah. and the banding changes by the amount of square footage you've got available to you as a property owner. Hence, converting a garage to a livable space yeah. to potentially change the banding of the property. You, you could end up with potentially seven flats, right, and four or five parking spaces, and. The tenants will change. Just suppose you had seven vans. How much room is that going to take up? A lot more than cars, will it? Mm. So one, one guy can bring a lorry yeah. over. Objection is overdevelopment of the no site, yeah. over intensity of the no site, argument. insufficient amenity space, and parking provision. Yes. And out of keeping with the area? Yeah. Well, it's well, the actual building itself hasn't oh, changed, it's no, within no, site, it so it is within the keeping of it. Well, well I don't know, it's changing the, the, the use of it. Maybe this yeah, is right. at 80. Well, that's what I see, Bristol's totally different. Yeah, it's all nice. And they really are whole. The street. 
We, yeah. Does it we, stop you doing licensing? Not in South Wales, no. No, in Bristol it's licensed, it's inspected, there's right. criteria. So we, we, we strongly mean, object. They've got, an, they've got a section, section four. I think yeah. strongly yeah. object. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
they're building up just to the boundary so the next door, yeah, so they've got to get I don't the feel the 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 no. I'm, 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 I'm abstaining on this. Sure, sort of right. Brian and Michael have proposed no objection. <laughs> Take a vote, please. We can talk to the neighbours who complain. But if they don't, no. Put your hands up again if you're in favour. There's no neighbours complaining. One, two, three, four, five. Five bulldozers complaining. There will be actually. Against. Changing the structure from the last ring, la 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 and the rear of the uh, And we also talk about shared access road, but that's not a planning issue, no. it's a civil matter. So. Civil. No problem, move it. I can't see a problem. The poor guys made, made an objection. Nobody can see it. Well, who's born is it, Brian? <laughs> I think they should call it, call it to site. We should, so we should say so. so call it in. Is it yeah. yeah. a light of planning so issue? Two, no, 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 right. right. no, no, no. It's a light of planning issue. No, there's no right to light. Right, right, to, right, to, right to privacy and being overlooked, but not actually right to natural light. No. There, there, there can be on secondary light, but not on ordinary light. In other words, if you is that five um, I'd like to on the side. <laughs> that light, 
appended on light in a staircase I guess if you look, uh, within an adjoining room. And that was the only one to type of the second room. Hmm. So you would probably win on that. I like that one. You can still get it. It's a bit further in that way. It could be like that. It's more of a bit 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 It's a rough road, isn't it? I'm not sure. So, that's the existing elevation, so that's mm. what's there at the moment. No, they've just all suddenly flooded in over the past few days. Maybe the people with their New Year's resolutions, I guess, to do a bit of housekeeping. Everybody couldn't be bothered to deal with them before Christmas and got rid of them in the sack period between Christmas and New Year. Mm. Well, it's warm weather starts to come up now, and it's spring and that's now. Oh, well, that's a depressing note. It's so difficult to fill things in. Right, next one. Uh, E20 0058F, direction single story rear extension to form additional living accommodation at 32 Harden Close. Want to come to the In my world. No. Oh, <laughs> this is close. a Jim Bradley joke. Yeah. It's, in my, it's in my online inbox and I have notification come through from an email. So. Uh, <laughs> it's in my world. Anyway. I just go with what. Is there any comment on there about the fuel line? For years, they've turned people down with applications there because they the government German. fuel lines went underneath. All of a sudden, they're now getting more and more applications to come in because the fuel line, parts of it, is redundant. But in order to build, they've got to remove their 
intersection of the fuel line at their own expense. Didn't it provide fuel to Filton Airfield? Yeah, for the times of war, no, it, yeah. it goes up to Reading, Berkshire. But it was in our area, it was in yeah. case the field was used in time of war. That, that, you with that verge that you saw just then on the photo, I think you'll find the fuel line runs under there. But you're not allowed to build within so many metres of the fuel line. Yeah, it definitely it runs, runs on it. They are. It runs just outside our boundary. That's right. But there is, there is already something there. <coughs> So story. that's what's there at the moment. Yeah. And that's what they want to put in. So they just want to extend so it further along. So they're wanting to extend what's already there. Yeah. And it that's would right. be foundations going down just to that depth. But if they wanted to put a double up, they'd have to go down deeper and that would probably be the detriment of the fuel line. Where is the fuel line? Where is the fuel line? The fuel line goes <coughs> everywhere. That's what we're thinking because there's a huge grass stand up between the road and the, yeah. the boundary line and then the properties. When the MS Centre uh, applied to have, do you remember it Brian? I think you came on site. They wanted to put an access out onto Bradley Stone Way. Yep, so we and they would not allow it because the fuel line is immediately out there on that bird. The helicopter signs are there, aren't people yeah. following it? And they had to come in from uh the road? We feel it we feel it upset the school, it upset all the residents. The, the fuel, uh, yeah, but the excuse they gave was effectively it wasn't fuel line. But it, it was it was the actual uh, cables or the cables. Yeah. But it's a fuel line. Yeah. It's right there. The whole of that bird. Yeah, it's good so, uh, can we have an objection to that? No, one? I will pass it. Okay, so no, it's yeah, already yeah. there. I second it. Yeah, I thought it was signed. For those in favour, then, please raise your hand. Yeah. 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 Uh, Rection of Windsor House, uh, Chris Edwards. Yeah, Rection of Front Porch, 30 Saxon Way. We're just trying to move on there. I'm trying to miss a few out. That's right, you don't have any fish or germ in the country. That's right. Yeah, German fish or germ in it. Saxon Way. You have to confirm them. So this has been a resubmission, so you can explain to us what that is. No, this is an Erection of Front Porch. Okay, so this is erection of the front porch. So it is this house here. Yeah. Oh, it's that. Yeah. And I can show you what. Was that house there? Oh, yeah, yeah that's fine. I can okay. The leather sheet. Okay. Yes. Yes. Let's second that. Yeah. What's all for? It's 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 a big mess. It just, they'll just sort of build sort of like round yeah, that's good. off the curb canopy that's already yeah. there. Yeah. Over up the lane and sit on secondly. Okay, if we were built on that, we can mm. see the actual uh, design. Yeah. I can show you the design if you like. Well, you can. Yeah. Don't be so fussy. No, we need to be seeing this. It's literally that. Yeah. It looks like a Doctor Who Tardis. But it's oh, it's 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 I didn't know that. Why is it a resubmission? It isn't. That's the next one. This is Brian. Oh, sorry. Everybody, we're still on the erection of front porch. Right. Was he talking to move on? Yeah. (laughs) Item ten is a restart. Well, that was was that unanimous? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure we're keeping wavering on that one. All right. Um, (laughs) Waiting. (laughs) Demolition (laughs) interested in certain three directions of two-story rear extension to provide additional living accommodation. And it's a resubmission of Team Under Team. So can you explain right. this? Yes. Personally. This was. Right. So this came in originally at the end of the year, and yeah. the Town Council had no objection to the planning of uh, application. So it's only been one step further. <laughs> then what? Then, then it got refused by South Block. I thought we'd joke it. Because the extension proposed, if approved, would not respect or enhance the character 
of the host dwelling and its context, design for height, massing, detailing, and materials of the development proposed. Really? So. Ooh. Oh, it's all very fine. I said, can't, you can't say. What happened? Yeah. Objective design. Constantine is down with it. Okay, mm. so. So, so we didn't have a problem, or councillors didn't have a problem with what it, was, what it looked like before. So it is this one here. So it's all going down in Saxon way, isn't it? It's taking that down, wouldn't it? Yes, yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. that different from what South Cross turned down? If you look at that, that's what we wanted to put in. Mm. And South Cross didn't like the look of that at all. Mm -hmm. Because that was very weird. And it was cladding and stuff and things. Mm. Like. Can you approve that? That's me personally. Yeah, well, very good. Good. I think. Uh, so that yeah. was what got refused by South Cross. Yeah, yeah. Then you have gone away and put it more key thing with what's there, yeah. Okay, oh, I'm sure we chaired that one. It's okay. Oh, that's okay. Um, that was... <coughs> <coughs> Not Franklin, is it? No, 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 it's not Franklin. The council's commented on it on the 26th of September. That's a wire. No, it's not Franklin's end. Always believe a non-attendance. It may not have been me then. I could tell you who was at the meeting if you like. Which one then? Oh, we oh, 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 second. Wants to have a quick look. Oh. So I'm sure it was business. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, there you are, see? Oh, I didn't share it. I yes. rest my case. Um, <laughs> Elaine, no, Michael proposed it. Michael. Elaine seconded it. There were six in favour and one against. Proposal yeah. uh, we so so there. There. See, Were you there? there? Uh, yes, Keith, you were there. Where Last you? one's Who's back. I remember uh, that one. Tony chaired it. Was I there? No, I wasn't, was I? Yes, you were there. Was I? Yes. Well, let's send it. We're up to our next. You know what? Right. We can feed back to Tony and say, you know, they were. Sharon, Sharon, please, time is good. I propose accepting it. Carry on. Roughly, move it. I agree. Right. Hang on a second. So that was Tom proposed no objection. Sherry seconded. And who got that, please? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in favour. Mm. Oh, no, I'm on the wrong one now. What am I doing? Um, you also switched off. I know what that was. That, that one wasn't it? I'm on the next one. I've got them up in the wrong order. Sorry, so, so it was seven in favour. Mm. And against? Abstention? We can always have a name vote on these, we can always go back to people after this one. And what's the next one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, next one, please. <laughs> so it's your fault. <laughs> right, erection of a summer house, 15 Crystal Way. Sorry, we'll have to let um, Sharon pick up. Um, no objection to that. Won't, won't. Yeah, that
they say it's planned. Oh, yeah, you can see this, the plan, but that's as much as the plan is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 carry out. Yeah, seconded. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, we've got that piece. <laughs> what are you going to use the extension for? Summer house. Putting summers in. I mean, I've got a granddaughter called Summer. Come on. Next one, please. Right. The next one is P20 00419 F. Change of use of Unit 2 from Business B1 to Coffee Shop at Unit 2 Great Park Road. That's amended. Ooh. Is that when we turn down? No, that's, it always said that. Planning orders amended. He uses classes orders. 1987 has amended. That's a statute. Statutory wording. So it is this one here. Mm. Business to. Yeah. What's B1? B1 links to. Oh, yes. That can have a category. No, no, no. That, but what does it equal? Because it said a class, a coffee shop is class A3. What's a business B1? Officers. Mm. Is it? Officers. So it's this, this one here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's fine. fine. So I it's not going to look any different. Outside, no. it's probably going to help all the offices. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Accepted. accepted. Yes. So that's what it's yeah, not going to cause objections from local no. residents. No, no. 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 Carry on. Oh, no. Is, no. Seconded. Yeah. Or please. Have you built that piece? Yes. Oh, yeah. Almost unanimous so far. Unanimous. Sorry, who? I know it was unanimous. Who proposed and who? I proposed. Top second. Very much. Oh no, we consultation. There's a ton of his names on this. Yeah. They're all new. A couple of new ones. Yeah. Yeah. Couple of new ones. Yeah. 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 Is a term. Okay, so this is a, it's could be it's, yeah. Could be one in the corner there. Fix, mm -hmm. fix glass, maybe. It's on the rear. It's just in the corner there. Instead of one window there, they've got two. It's a one. Oh, 